the superior man is careful of his words and temperate in eating and drinking. The I Ching, or Book of Changes. Private Detective Cormoran Strike was standing in the corner of a small, stuffy, crowded marquee with a wailing baby in his arms. Heavy rain was falling onto the canvas above, its irregular drumbeat audible even over the chatter of guests and his newly baptised godson's screams. The heater at Strike's back was pumping out too much warmth, but he couldn't move, because three blonde women, all of whom were around 40 and holding plastic glasses of champagne, had him trapped while taking it in turns to shout questions about his most newsworthy cases. Strike had agreed to hold the baby for a mo while the baby's mother went to the bathroom, but she'd been gone for what felt like an hour. When, asked the tallest of the blondes loudly, did you realise it wasn't suicide? Took a while, Strike shouted back, full of resentment that one of these women wasn't offering to hold the baby. Surely they knew some arcane female trick that would soothe him. He tried gently bouncing the child up and down in his arms. It shrieked still more bitterly. Behind the blondes stood a brunette in a shocking pink dress, who Strike had noticed back at the church. She talked and giggled loudly from her pew before the service had started and had drawn a lot of attention to herself by saying, aww, loudly, while the holy water was being poured over the sleeping baby's head, so that half the congregation was looking at her rather than towards the font. Their eyes now met. Hers were a bright sea blue and expertly made up so that they stood out like aquamarines against her olive skin and long dark brown hair. Strike broke eye contact first. Just as the lopsided fascinator and slow reactions of the proud grandmother told Strike she'd already drunk too much, so that glance had told him that the woman in pink was trouble. And the Shacklewell Ripper, said the bespectacled blonde, did you actually physically catch him? No, I did it all telepathically. Sorry, said Strike, because he just glimpsed Ilsa, his godson's mother, through the French doors leading into the kitchen. Need to give him back to his mum. He manoeuvred past the disappointed blondes and the woman in pink and headed out of the marquee, his fellow guests parting before him as though the baby's wails were a siren. Oh God, I'm sorry, Corm, said fair-haired, bespectacled Ilsa Herbert. She was leading up against the side, talking to Strike's detective partner, Robin Ellicott, and Robin's boyfriend, CID officer Ryan Murphy. Give him here, he needs a feed. Come with me, she added to Robin, we can talk. Couldn't grab me a glass of water, could you please? Fucking great, thought Strike, watching Robin walk away to fill a glass at the sink, leaving him alone with Ryan Murphy, who, like Strike, was well over six feet tall. There, the resemblance ended. Unlike the private detective, who resembled a broken-nosed Beethoven with dark, tightly curling hair and a naturally surly expression, Murphy was classically good-looking, with high cheekbones and wavy light brown hair. Before either man could find a subject of conversation, they were joined by Strike's old friend Nick Herbert, a gastroenterologist and father of the baby who'd just been assaulting Strike's eardrums. Nick, whose sandy hair had begun receding in his twenties, was now half bald. So, how's it feel to have renounced Satan? Nick asked Strike. Bit of a wrench, obviously, said the detective, but we had a good run. Murphy laughed, and so did somebody else right behind Strike. He turned. The woman in pink had followed him out of the marquee. Strike's late Aunt Joan would have thought the pink dress inappropriate for a christening, a clinging wraparound affair with a low V-neckline and a hemline that showed a lot of tanned leg. I was going to offer to hold the baby, she said in a loud, slightly husky voice, smiling up at Strike, who noticed Murphy's gaze sliding down to the woman's cleavage and back up to her eyes. I love babies, but then you left. Wonder what you're supposed to do with a christening cake, said Nick, contemplating the large, uncut slab of iced fruit cake that lay on the island in the middle of the kitchen, topped with a blue teddy bear. Eat it, suggested Strike, who was hungry. He'd had only a couple of sandwiches before Ilsa had handed him the baby, and, as far as he could see, his fellow guests had demolished most of the available food while he'd been trapped in the marquee. Again, the woman in pink laughed. Yeah, but are there supposed to be pictures taken first or what? Said Nick. Pictures, said the woman in pink, definitely. We'll have to wait then, said Nick. Looking Strike up and down through his wire-rimmed glasses, he asked, how much have you lost now? Three stone, said Strike.
good going, said Murphy, slim and fit in his single-breasted suit. Fuck off, you smug bastard.